The Puma Armored Infantry Fighting Vehicle, AIFV, is a tracked vehicle manufactured for the German Army by Project System and Management, a joint venture of German defense companies Rheinmetall Land System and Krauss Maffei Wegmann, under a program authorized by the German Federal Parliament in 2002. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced MBTs at present. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin. The Puma is a German infantry fighting vehicle, or short SPZ, designed to replace the German Army's aging Martyr IFVs. The first batch of 350 vehicles began production in 2010 and will be completed in August 2021. The second group of 229 Pumas has been funded. On July 6, 2009, mass production began. Krauss Maffe Wegman and Rhein Metal Land System formed a joint venture called Project System Management GmbH to carry out this project. The Puma is one of the best protected IFVs on the market with a high power to weight ratio. The Puma, while similar to existing IFVs on the outside, incorporates a number of advancements and cutting edge technologies. The most obvious of these is the ability to mount various types of armor. Another feature is the compact one-piece crew cabin, which allows for direct crew interaction face-to-face. -face. For example, replacing the driver or gunner in the event of a medical emergency while minimizing the protected volume. The cabin is air-conditioned, NBC-proof has internal nuclear and chemical sensors, and a fire suppression system that uses non-toxic agents. The engine compartment is equipped with its own fire extinguishing system. The driver station, located in a protrusion in front of the gunner, in front of the turret, is the only compromise of the otherwise nearly cuboid cabin. The use of an unmanned, double asymmetrical turret is one measure used to achieve the one-piece cabin. While slightly off-center turrets are common in IFVs, the Puma's turret is on the left side of the vehicle, while the main cannon is mounted on the right side of the turret and thus on the middle axis of the hull when the turret is in the forward position. The outer hull, excluding the turret, is smooth and low to reduce shot traps and the overall visual signature. The entire combat-ready vehicle will be air-transportable in its base configuration by the Airbus A400M tactical airlifter. Its 3-plus-6 person crew capability is comparable to other vehicles of comparable weight, such as the US American M2 Bradley IFV, which is the same as in the Martyr, but smaller than the 3-plus-8 of the CV9030 and CV9035. The primary armament is a Rheinmetall 30mm MK32 ABM airburst munitions autocannon with a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute and an effective range of 3,000 meters. The smaller 30-173mm cartridge offers significant weight savings advantages over the Bofors 40mm gun mounted on the CV9040, for example, due to a much smaller ammunition size and weight. The belt feed system also provides a large number of ready-to-fire rounds, whereas the 40mm only provides 24 shots per magazine. In a CV9040, this is not a problem, but it would force the Puma off the battlefield to reload the unmanned turret. There are currently two types of ammunition available directly from the autocannon's dual ammunition feed. The first is a sub-caliber, fin-stabilized APF-SDST T for Tracer with high penetration capabilities, designed primarily for use against medium armored vehicles. The second is a full caliber multi purpose kinetic energy timed fuse munition with the ability to eject a cone of sub munitions depending on the fuse setting. Because the weapon fires from an open bolt, no cartridge is inserted until the trigger is depressed and the ammunition type can be selected shot by shot. The ammunition capacity is 400 rounds, 200 of which are ready to fire and 200 of which are in storage. To keep the weight under 35 tons, the secondary armament was a coaxially mounted 5.56mm HKMG4 machine gun firing at 850 rounds per minute and with an effective range of 1,000 meters. The ammunition capacity is 2,000 rounds, 1,000 of which are ready to fire and 1,000 of which are in storage. While this is a smaller weapon than the Western Standard Secondary Armament with 7.62mm caliber MG, it has the advantage of allowing the crew to use their own ammunition. When the lower range and penetration of 5.56mm rounds is an issue, the main gun's high ammunition load allows the vehicle crew to use one or two main gun rounds instead. The 7.62mm MG3 can also be housed in the gun housing. The MG4 will be replaced by the MG5 in the coming years. 
The German Puma vehicles will be equipped with a turret-mounted Eurospike Spike LR missile launcher, which will carry two missiles to combat main battle tanks, helicopters, and infrastructure targets such as bunkers. The Spike LR missile has a range of up to 4,000 meters and can be launched in fire-and-forget or fire-and-observe mode. In addition to the standard 8-shot smoke grenade launchers, there is a 6-shot 76mm launcher at the back of the vehicle for close-in defense. The main back door can be opened halfway, allowing two passengers to scout and shoot from moderate cover. The Puma was designed to accommodate additional armor, with the initial intention of offering three protection classes that are entirely or partially interchangeable. The basic vehicle, with a combat-ready weight of 31.5 metric tons, is air-transportable in the A400M. Protection Class C includes two large side panels that cover almost the entire flanks of the vehicle and act as track skirts, a nearly complete turret cover, and armor plates that cover the majority of the vehicle's roof. The side panels are made of a combination of composite and spaced armor. It increases the gross weight by approximately 9 metric tons. Originally, there was a Protection Class B designed for rail transport. However, it became clear that Class C falls within the weight and dimension limits for train ship transportation, so Class B was abandoned. The AMAP composite armor protects the Puma, while the AMAP B module protects against kinetic energy threats and the AMAP SC module protects against shaped charges. Three Class A Pumas could be flown into a theater by four A400M aircraft, with the fourth plane transporting Class C armor kits and simple lifting equipment. The Pumas could be quickly upgraded to Armor Class C. The basic armor can withstand direct hits from 14.5mm Russian rounds, the most powerful HMG cartridge in use today, and up to twice as powerful as the Western de facto standard 12.7mm 50BMG cartridge. The frontal armor can withstand direct hits from medium-caliber projectiles and shaped charge projectiles. In Protection Class C, the Puma's flanks are armored to roughly the same level as the front, while the roof armor can withstand artillery or mortar bomblets. MUSS components include an infrared jammer, UV sensors, and a fog grenade dispenser. The German Army's Pumas will be outfitted with a soft kill system known as the Multifunctionals Selbstschutz System, or MUSS, which is capable of defeating ATGMs. While maintaining 450mm ground clearance, the entire vehicle is protected against heavy blast mines up to 10 kg and projectile charges from below. Almost all of the cabin's equipment, including the seats, has no direct contact with the floor, which improves crew and technical safety. All cabin roof hatches are side-slide, making them easier to open manually even when obstructed by debris. The exhaust is mixed with fresh air before being vented on the back left side. This, in conjunction with special IR suppressing paint, aims to reduce the IFV's thermal signature. That's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.